perhaps I was too young to take LSD. I'm not really sure where I went wrong in life. When I was 16, I read Walden by Henry David Thoreau and Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper. Everything always seeming a little strange to me. It could just be my nature to question. Perhaps this pushes me. But to what end? All I've ever wanted since I was a child was to live in a cabin and pursue my arts. When I was young, that was just drawing clouds. And today it has evolved. And yet the world does everything it can to seemingly keep me from what I love. But again, it could just be me. And in such difficult times, I have many spiritual counselors or practices that I reach for. Ultimately, the spirit realm, I believe, being more true than anything physical. In fact, the physical just being a manifestation of the spirit. And when times get rough externally, it seems there's nothing we can do to resolve certain difficulties. Not in the moment. There's an ebb and flow to the energies in this realm. And the sooner we understand this, the sooner and easier it will be to navigate these waters of life. Coming from the Judeo-Christian values, pretty well versed in a basic understanding of these values. Also leading me to question all religions and ultimately leading me to a type of Zen Buddhist path. When looking at the Buddhist population, we tend to see a great level of happiness and selflessness, not only in philosophy, but in actual practice, but ultimately being a little bit rigid for my taste. And I found myself eventually submerged in the teachings of Taoism. And presently, my favorite philosophy, Taoism encompassing many avenues. And today I'm just going to share one. And if there's any interest, I'll continue to share. Typically, some of my favorite Taoist teachings come from the old wise man Lao Tzu. Some people aren't sure if Lao Tzu ever really even existed. He may just be the sum of many wise men in a time long ago. But today we're going to examine the I Ching, one of the classics in Taoist teachings, often used as an oracle, but even at face value, the words and teachings in this book are amongst my favorite that I've ever come across. They have instructed me with impeccable wisdom and oftentimes the teachings have been completely opposite to anything that I was ever taught in life. And this book is so old it doesn't have an exact date or an author said to have just existed from the beginning and with my new understanding of history perhaps this is a book from the old world and because it's an old Chinese book there is a translation and the author of this translation is Brian Brown Walker amongst one of my favorite translations and I'll leave a link to his book below in which I have given away and repurchased many copies both physically and digitally and what can we expect from this book and these teachings what kind of values can be found within 
And here's what he has to say. The I Ching takes a decidedly realistic view of the world. It doesn't mislead us into thinking that evil in ourselves, in others, in the world at large, can be eliminated once and for all. It acknowledges that we all have in our characters both positive and negative elements, and it teaches us to be led by our superior qualities so that our thoughts and actions are free of inferior influences. It also teaches us how to respond to negative influences outside ourselves in order to avoid harm and maintain our well-being. The qualities that the Book of Changes counsels us to embody in our lives are modesty, awareness, acceptance, adaptability, compassion, restraint, innocence, perseverance, tolerance, reticence, devotion to inner truth, patience, openness, detachment, conscientiousness, balance, and inner independence. The qualities that the I Ching urges us to let go of are fear, anger, desire, arrogance, aggressiveness, anxiety, harshness, cunning, goal orientation, and self-indulgence. At this point, these are merely words. It's only when we begin to follow the guidance of the I Ching that we begin to have an inkling of their true meaning. So I'll leave it at that for an intro. So, used as an oracle, it involves rolling some coins, and I've done that already. And we get a passage, or what's called a hexagram, one of 64 possibilities. And now I've also hoped for a message for all of us. I have no question in particular, and we all have similar concerns, and I hope this will speak to all of us. So this hexagram begins with standstill, or stagnation. Number 12. In times of stagnation, attend to your attitude. It is the symbol of heaven over earth. And it begins. It's an unavoidable fact of life that inferior influences sometimes prevail. Improperly motivated people ascend to power. There is injustice and conflict and poverty. And spiritual life in general descends into darkness and decay. While these difficult times are inevitable, and the arrival of this hexagram indicates this is such a time, this does not mean that we have to stagnate personally as well. By turning inward and realigning ourselves with proper principles, we initiate the return to light, truth, and progress. The image of P is that of heaven moving away from earth. When this happens, the inferior qualities in ourselves and in others come to the surface and seek expression. It's unlikely now that you can affect what others do and say, or that your activities will bear much fruit. While it's natural to feel anxious and disappointed about this state of affairs, it's essential to disengage from these inferior emotions now. To indulge in them is to abandon your superior self and plunge into a state of disintegration. What is wise now is to accept that external progress is unlikely. Turn your attention inward and examine your own thoughts and attitudes for inferior influences and departures from the principles of the sage. By withdrawing into solitude and refining your higher nature, you continue to grow while all else around you stagnates. 
and we're given three special lines, being four, five, and six, before it changes into another hexagram. Line four. Only when you allow yourself to be led by the sage can you lead others. Concentrate on being modest and correct, and the situation will improve. Line 5. A change is at hand, but good fortune can only be maintained by those who are conscientious and correct in good times as well as bad. Do not allow your ego to take control. And finally, line 6. The standstill can be ended by the efforts of a superior person. Allow the sage to guide you in this, and good fortune will be met. Very interesting. And now we'll jump to the second passage, which is number 8. Holding together. Seek union with others and with the sage. Now what is meant by the use of the word sage would be the universe, the higher power, God, the creative force, whatever. So we begin. Holding together denotes a time for creating union with others in order to complement and assist one another. Just as the rain complements and assists the earth, which is an image often associated with this hexagram. In order for your unions to bear the greatest possible fruit, certain requirements must be met. The first requirement for holding together with others is that we hold together with our own inner truth. This means that we adhere to proper principles as a matter of habit, striving always to remain innocent, balanced, and correct. In short, marry the sage first and faithfully, and good fortune will come to all subsequent marriages. The second requirement for holding together with others is that we steadfastly resist the clamoring of the emotional inferiors within. Every union meets with challenges, and if we are not resolute against the effects of fear, doubt, despair, and anger, no lasting success will be possible in any relationship. This is a good time to ask yourself if you are displaying the steadfast correctness and strength of character that are at the heart of all great unions. Finally, it's the responsibility of one who would unite to see that it's possible for others to enjoy union as well. The desire for community is deeply felt by all humans, and it is the shared responsibility of all those on the higher path to make some sort of family available to those in need. In doing this, we pay homage to the sage. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you were able to extract some sort of wisdom from these words. In these times, I've been wanting to share something to comfort others, and yet there's nothing I could say that even begins to encapsulate the wisdom of this book, The I Ching. So for today, do have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe.